I've enjoyed reading uh, uh, your story and the story of your father, of your 82 years old father and uh, his uh, successful uh, longevity and lifestyle experiment. He's uh, starting a new career, he's full of energy. And I have uh, a thriving eight years old mother and <laughs> she was actually uh, attending uh, Walter Longo's uh, lecture for our last course, and she had uh, a chance to ask, ask him a question about fasting in Italian, because my mother is Italian, oh. I'm Italian. So, uh, and, and, uh, and Walter Longo told her that fasting is perhaps not recommended over the age of 65 years old. So my question to you is what are do you think that we should personalize uh, longevity strategies based on age, gender, uh, activity level? And so perhaps what your, your father is doing may be different from what you are doing or we, I should be doing. So yes. what, your, what are your thoughts about this concept of personalized longevity medicine? Uh, okay. Well, uh, first of all, I think Volta is wrong, um, <laughs> but uh, he and I have always disagreed on pretty much everything. Um, my father is 82. He eats one meal a day usually, uh, and he's thriving, um, but that's not a clinical trial. Now it is true that you want to have a bit of body fat on you, on you, on you when you're older. Um, it, you don't want to be too skinny, but let me, you know, repeat what I said. Skipping meals doesn't mean you have to be thin. You can eat a big meal for dinner. Uh, I just did, I just got back from a restaurant um, and I'm eating big meals every dinner um, and I'm not losing weight. So I don't understand why Volta says that uh, people over, that, over a relatively young age shouldn't intermittent fast. I don't see any scientific evidence for that. I'd be happy to see it. Um, but your point about um, tailoring the treatment is very important. Uh, I work with clients to give them some advice on you know, diet, exercise, supplements, and I measure their blood work every time. I, I mean, I ask them to measure it because you, you can't optimize the body unless you, you have a dashboard. And we wouldn't drive a car without a dashboard, but we, do, we, we don't do the same for our bodies. But that's changing rapidly. There's a growing movement and also uh, even the FDA is appreciating the need for much more monitoring, both from uh, blood, um, but also uh, these biosensors that are hitting the market. Uh, right now, you can, you can get a, a glucose sensor at home, uh, just order one up. Um, and soon you'll be able to order a sensor that you can stick on your chest and uh, it'll measure your body a thousand times a second and tell you if you're gonna have a heart attack next week or if you have a flu or a, a cold, and if you need an antibiotic, or even if you're depressed. And that world will be here in a couple of years. Um, it'll be mainstream within 10. Uh, and it's gonna save trillions of dollars in healthcare costs because you can send patients home early and monitor them remotely instead of having them in hospital. If you want to learn more about the science of epigenetics and nutrition longevity, Check out my newsletter at dotraronica.com and in the link below this video so you won't miss my upcoming free webinars, courses and live Q&A.